Hey everybody, this is Birch. Um, hopefully a video. All right. We got a mail called hopefully a video. And so why not? Let's, let's make it a video. It's a short, it's a short one. It says, hello, Perch. I don't know if you'll read this by the time you close shop. The sooner the better, right? I'm attempting to better my skills in art and storytelling, and I love these videos for the business and sales side of the industry. Even though I'm aiming for a more manga-looking product, how would I make my product the best product for my local store owners and beyond? Help me sell to the sellers. That's it. Um, so, you know, I've, I've given a lot of advice on this topic in the past. And I think, you know, if I was to distill up to kind of the, the three big things to remember, and then there's a lot of details that may or may not work for you, but the three big things are, first of all, you know, whatever product you're making has to feel natural to you. Meaning, you know, if you're going to have a really hard time selling it to the sellers, if you don't believe in your product or it doesn't match you, or it's just, you're, you're trying to make something that you think other people might want, um, you need to make what you want. Now, it, assuming you're the owner of all this. Now, if you're, by the way, if you're contracted by a bigger company, you know, then they get to decide what they want. And then, you know, you figure out how you best fill that and make your name in the process. But when it's your product, it's your comic, it's your thing that you're putting out. Um, it sounds like really simple advice, but that's the probably the biggest thing that I see trip people up is that they they will, you know, create a, a comic or they'll have an idea. And then they're like, oh, you know, they'll they'll, they'll start a YouTube channel. And then they'll discover that, you know, you get more YouTube videos, uh, views when you bitch about things. And so then they, and then th that's like the sliding slope into, you know, complaining about Amber Heard all day long. And it comes across in your comic, very, your product is your YouTube channel at this point, not your product. And if you try and then, you know, you have a really good idea for a story, but you're trying to warp it to kind of appeal to this, this new audience that you have, well, well, number one. The audience that comes and consumes your your YouTube channel is quite often not the same people who are going to show up and buy your book. And besides, if if you know if you're trying to uh, you say sell it to the sellers, so if you're if you're talking about going into a comic shop or you know somewhere else to sell your book, you know those people are not watching these channels at all. So you you, you got to find a way kind of to to create the product you want. And this I guess gets to the second piece of advice is you got to find a way to tether your end buyer to your seller. And so if you, you know, if you're selling yourself, by the way, if you're going and you're crowdfunding, you're putting your book up online or, you know, something like that, then you can more directly talk to your audience. That in theory is easier. Although, you know, that's where you discover that your audience is pretty fickle. A lot of crowdfunding campaigns are, are, you know, it's, it's, I, the bottom has dropped out is as much of an exaggeration as, you know, Marvel is on fire and about to go over a cliff. Um, neither is really true. Marvel still tends to crank out comics at, you know, a declining rate, not volume, but, but money and crowdfunding books have, you know, are making less than they did two years ago, substantially. So both, both things are true. And the, you know, the, the key the takeaway from that is, Hey, people are uh, less interested in comics, certainly as a speculator. I saw, you know, not to go too wide here, but I saw an article in Forbes. It's probably worth a, a, a video by itself. And it ta it's talking about how the MCU and Kevin Feige, who literally walked on water and could do no wrong for a long period of time, the article was he's recreating the 90s comic bust um, at an accelerated pace. And the argument was, you know, in the 90s, they went for kind of cheap gimmicks. They too quickly rushed out new characters who had no no meaning uh there was it was it was really banking on the you can't miss this comic because it'll be worth something and they're comparing it to the mcu of you know you can't miss this movie or you're gonna miss a big part of the story well the reality is you can miss you can miss these movies it'll be okay uh -huh. it you're not you're not missing out on a moment uh but anyway um the idea of selling it to the sellers what you have to do is, first of all, understand who your target audience is. Who, who's going to buy your book? Uh, what are they into? What do they like? Ideally, and this is one of the, you know, we've talked to any retailers, one of the things that works the best with them, which is somewhat puzzling why comic publishers don't do it either, is basically map your customer and the thing they like to your book. Saying, you know, if, if you have a customer that likes vampires, likes horror, 
likes, uh, you know, kind of more suspenseful books, then these are the four books for you. These are the ones that that customer is going. I think that, you know, that it's, it's, it's simple to do. And if you go in, you're selling again through a seller. Um, so you're, you're basically selling your comics to somebody who's going to sell the comics to somebody else. Then you need to basically help them kind of lead the way to where they're going to get their money and where their audience is going to be. You know, your, your audience is going to, you know, like this book if they like traditional 1980s superhero comics. That's, that's kind of, that's a key part of how the whole thing works. So I, I think that's the, you know, kind of second piece of advice. And the third piece of advice is um, make sure you have a product in hand before you push too hard at the seller. With crowdfunding books, you can you can somewhat crowdfund on an idea if your idea is good enough and if you have enough of a mailing list and, and people backed up. But if you're selling through a B2B to C kind of market, if you're selling to a seller, you've got to have a substantial part of your book done or completely done in order to package it. Because retailers are, I'd say, dimly aware, in some cases very aware, but but in a lot of cases dimly aware of crowdfunding. And in particular, they've heard the complaints from their customers of, I backed this for $20 and I never got it, or it took two years to deliver, or what have you. And they will not, nobody's going to take a flyer, particularly in this economy and the way the comic stores are at. Nobody is going to go, well, this seems like a nice guy, I like the cut of his jib and this story idea sounds interesting. I'll, I'll, I'll certainly reserve a couple copy. I mean, you may have a comic store retailer. If you want to go in and kind of test your idea, you could do that, you know, as long as that retailer isn't laying out any cash. But generally, they're not really going to even know what to do with it. So you're either going to get a, you know, half-hearted approval, like, yeah, sure, I'll carry that. But they were, they're not serious or really thinking about it. Or they're just going to think, you're wasting my time. You don't have a product to sell, so I, I, don't, I don't know what to do. So, a- again, you could probably find a shop near you, especially if you've been a regular there, who will go along with that stuff because they know you. But, you know, that's not going to help you as you try and kind of mass market stuff. The key is, and it doesn't always take money. In fact, in many cases, it usually doesn't. The key is to take work away from the person who you want selling your product. You know, make, make the product, you know, easy to understand. Give it a solicitation text. Print up a uh, you know simple flyer that they could tuck into a, a pull box customer, uh, you know. So as they're picking up their comics, like, hey, here's something a you know an indie artist is trying to do. If you have any interest, you know, put click you know go to this website, click this QR code. It will map back to my store. I, I don't know. There's you could get really fancy about it, but make it so the retailer doesn't have to think much, can pick up your book, can put it on the shelf, and can move along. And definitely, uh, you know, the other thing you want to do is, uh, you know, angrily tweet about it on a constant basis. You're going to want, you're publishing your book. You're going to want to go to Twitter and you're going to want to pick fights with as many people as humanly possible. Feel free to liberally use the word cuck and Nazi on a regular basis. People love that. And they definitely will, uh, will go in and buy, and buy your books if, if you, uh, if you go that direction. Incel is another good one too. Um, and uh, industry shill. That's a, that's another. These are all good terms uh, to use when you're trying to sell your book and and get that uh, get that buyer interested. You, you want to be as as absolutely much as much of an asshole as humanly possible. It's a uh, it's very appealing. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Anyway, um, good luck with your book. I mean, again, there's there's a million little details, and I've covered most of them on this channel at one time or another. But the the key here is just be. You know, Think you are building a product, so think of your product, you know, like you're you you you're you're putting something on the shelf. How would you want it put on the shelf? How would you want it done? And what would you want it uh, said and marketed like? Um, hand as much of that stuff over, and you'll definitely have you know good success. Anyway, good luck to you. We're all rooting for you, and thanks for listening. 